What's up? Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Give everybody a few minutes to get in. Of course, I'm on time. And y'all like, as usual. Give everybody another minute and we're going to get started. Good evening, good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another minute, we're gonna start at 7.05 my time. Seven oh five my time. So that'll be in just a second. I'm thinking some people bought the class and forgot about it. That's okay. get started good evening everyone and welcome to the valentine's rose cake class uh if you are watching the replay the replay is available to you forever uh they never go away um so we're gonna go ahead and get started with everything okay and i'll give you guys a second to get set up all right
All right. I'm sorry, guys. That was work. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, yes, I am, Melody. All right. So I, I posted the supply list uh, on the live. And what I have started doing was actually giving out the supply list um, on the night of the live or during the time of the live for a specific reason. Um, I think it's best that you actually watch the video first and then go back and follow along with the video after you've actually seen the techniques on how to do things. Uh, that gives you a better understanding because if you're actually working along, I've noticed that people get so sidetracked and they'll miss steps because they're actually trying to listen and watch, you know, exactly at the same time um, what I'm doing and trying to do it too. So I post everything now so that uh, you can actually see what the supplies are now. And this uh, cake is very, very limited in supplies. So, so easy. Um, you don't have to worry about like going out getting a lot of stuff. So we're going to get started. So the first thing you'll need is a cake drum and a cake. I'm going to be using an eight inch cake. This is just some cakes I already had wrapped up um, from a class. So I'm going to use these. Um, you'll need your combs, uh, any of your ester combs. I'm using different ones tonight, but I'm also going to use my, um, the bingo comb that gives you the stripes, the stripe comb. And I'm using another one of the combs just to create a different effect on the side. So what I'm going to show you is, um, we're going to go through and get started with this. So the first cake we're going to do is going to be the rose cake, uh, which is what's advertised for the class. Now, this cake is extremely easy. I know a lot of people have problems with piping roses, uh, but roses are extremely easy. Uh, something I learned a long time ago, uh, I found out that uh, the techniques that some of the other uh, instructors actually teach, like when you're first getting started with basic cakes, they teach you how to count petals. Um, and they, you know, if you've, if you've taken some of those classes, you'll remember the three, the five, the seven, and you, you'll count the petals and so on to make your rose and you're probably used to making them on one of these rose nails. Um, well, this uh, pretty much eliminates the need for the nails um, and everything like that, it's cause your turntable acts as your nail. So all you need to do is concentrate on piping your petals. And that's what we're gonna do tonight, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna level off the top of our cake. So this one I'm, I'm gonna show you right now, well, I'm gonna level this cake off um, and I'm gonna show you that you do not throw away the actual cake. You're not gonna throw the cake away. You're gonna still need um, all of this that I'm shaving off of here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go in and my cake is frozen. So I'm gonna take this top off of here. Just like this, all right? And I'm gonna save this. You don't wanna throw the top away because you're gonna need it. So you remember you always, all, all of the tops always face down. And so you just add some icing to your board and you're gonna always lay those flat, all right? So go ahead now and fill your layer. And this is the time now, if you were adding any filling to the cake, you would do that here, all right? So my other one is pretty uh, flat already, but I'm gonna still shave off a little bit off the top of it because I wanna show you what we're gonna do with the extra cake that we have, the tops that we have. All right. So I'll lay this one flat on here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and just add some icing to the top of here, all right? So those pieces that we cut off, we're gonna lay those on top. like this, okay? 
And what we've done now is just build a little mountain on top of there. It's true, really, really simple, okay? Everybody with me so far? Everybody with me? We're just going through some basic, some basics right now. Basic prep work for the cake. All right. Y'all quiet, so I guess y'all watching. We're gonna keep going. All right, so the next thing we'll do. I'm just gonna go ahead and ice my cake. Now, normally we would do what, we, uh, what we're what we used to, which is the upside down method, but this is that's not really needed uh, for the cake that we're doing, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just ice this whole thing. Remember when you icing, you always want to ice icing to icing, never icing to cake. If you ice, if you ice it the opposite way of icing to cake, um, you're gonna end up with crumbs in your icing. So you always ice the opposite way, icing to icing. All right. So what we're doing is I'm, I'm just building up a little mound on the top of here from the uh, extra cake that we added to the top. So what it's gonna look like is a, lot, a little dome at the top of here. Like one of those, uh, one of the cupcakes that we usually do that has a dome on it. All right, everybody see okay? Everybody see all right? Okay, we good? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off this extra icing. this down so you always want to just bring everything upwards all right so now we're gonna stop we're gonna leave it just like this and we're gonna take it to the freezer all right All right, now through the makings of TV magic, we already have one ready. Ain't that how they do on TV? All right, so we're gonna take out our comb now. Now, the first one we're going to use, uh, we're, we're doing our rose cake right now. So, I'm going to use one of my ester cones to go ahead and create my effect on the side of the cake, all right? So, I'm using uh, some red icing, some bright Christmas red icing on here to give it more of a Valentine's effect, all right? But I still got it a little streaked in my bag, so I'm going to add some uh, some white in here. Then I'll go in and add some red. So 
So if you were wondering how they get the watercolor effect on their cakes, this is pretty much it right here. You're just adding blotches of color in between spots to build up your color palette to the colors that you want. So you can have three, four, five, six different colors on there as you've seen on seeing some of the uh, uh, pictures on Instagram in different places. So you're gonna use your bin scraper now just to go around and smooth off some of your icing. But you don't wanna get it all the way um, too smooth uh, because you're gonna go back over that with your cone. So now I'm gonna use my ester cone and I can't, don't quote me because I can't remember what's the name of this actual cone because I have all of them. So it's hard to keep up with all the names of them. But it creates a really, really nice effect. I like it. All right. So I'm going to take my cone and just drag it around my cake. All right. Just so I can see the design and the line on there, okay? Okay. All right, so that extra icing, you just take it on up on here just to build up more of our dome. Don't worry about your bottom right now. You're gonna go back over there. All right. So for the tip that you're gonna need, I like to use the rose tip. Now, depending on what size cake you're doing, you'll have either the uh, Wilton 125 or you'll have the Wilton 104. I think this is it before we got plopped on here. Yeah, it'll be the Wilton 104, okay? So you'll have, it's always one, one larger than the other one. So I'm gonna use the uh, larger one because I'm doing an eight inch cake. If you were doing a, a cupcake or something, you could use the smaller one, all right? All right, so this is super simple. Now I'm going to streak this bag. So I'm going to add some red on one side of it and I'm going to add in some white on the other side just to give it a more of, uh, give the rose a different effect on it. And you can do any color variations with this, okay? All right. So just as you would do if you were doing a rose, just a regular rose or anything, you just always gonna start out with just a little mound on the top. Just like we do, like we just make this mound on here. And you're using your turntable just to spin that around, okay? And what we're doing is actually creating the bud. So you'll see the little bud on top of there. All right. Everybody good? And as you can see, mine is crooked, so I'll do it again for you. Put it in the middle. All right, there we go. My middle anyway. So what I'm doing is creating the bullet. Okay. Y'all good? All right. So you always want to keep a paper towel because you, with roses, you have to keep your tip clean. So you're going to start down building your petals up, okay? So all you're doing is taking your tip and you're making loops to, to build your petals. So you're going to go from here at the top and make a petal. All right? So you go over and you're just making the petals. Now it helps if your buttercream is stiff 
for uh, your uh, when you're doing this design because it helps to hold the shape of the buttercream and the design. So all you're doing is continuing to build your petals and uh, your same motion. Now you're keeping your tip at a 90 degree angle. You're just making pretty much making these little humps like this, okay? Everybody with me? With me so far? All right. So again, we're gonna make the hump. We're making the petals. Now as you go outwards, the further you come out from the cake, you're gonna start turning your tip, turning your hand out like this, all right? Because you want to curve it a little bit so the petals can start to go out instead of all of them just flowing in on top of each other like that, okay? All right, so you keep going. Now, this is a lot of icing. Uh, I heard somebody said, somebody asked a question on there, like, what do you do with all this icing? Um, I mean, the design is just a lot of icing on here for this. But it does have a beautiful effect. So I'm sure that, you know, people, some people just won't mind. They'll just be buying it for the effect. And it'll be an additional uh, a menu item for your Valentine's menu. Or Mother's Day. These are great Mother's Day cakes for a Mother's Day special. Keep your tip clean. And as you can see, I've layered my colors. So as I'm going outward now, the color lightens up some. Now you want to bring this all the way to the edge. This design goes all the way to the edge. If you have the uh, Wilton's turntable, it makes it a lot e easier because you can actually tilt your your table to get the sides out some. Um, but you don't necessarily have to have it, so. All right. So I'll finish off the last few. And to finish it off, you just take your tip and go all the way around. Okay. So what you left with is your beautiful rose in the top of the cake. Okay. So say you want to fancy it up a bit. You're going to take your, um, your any tip that you have now and you'll go around and create a border on here. All right, so I always clean off my board. All right, so I'm gonna take just a basic star tip here because I love uh, all star borders. I am definitely an old school, um, old school buttercream piper. Um, I love the old school techniques because I always say that they'll never go anywhere. And um, it's just some stuff that you should not stray away from. And that's just one of those things is learning your old school piping techniques because you're going to have to go back to them one day and use them. I think all of the new stuff is, is wonderful, but don't forget your roots. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pipe a border around the bottom, okay? And I will start here. And all I'm going to do is a reverse shell border. Okay? As you can see.
So if you're you, if you've done a shell border uh, before, it's just a reverse shell. You're going one way and another way, going back and forth with it. All right. Okay, definitely a quick and easy design. You can do so many variations with this because if you like on the original picture, there was a border around the top. You can put ribbon on the bottom. You can add bling to it. Uh, just always, you can change up the variations in so many different ways to give it different unique looks for uh, any holiday of what's going on. Uh, definitely, I would say, uh, you know, Easter cakes and stuff like that. Mother's Day and all those are going to be major uh, for these type of designs. Uh, Valentine's Day will just add something additional to your menu. Um, it's really, really quick and easy, like I said. So you shouldn't have a problem with uh, saying that you can't keep up uh, with, you know, the, the load from doing this, uh, offering them. So Wilson makes this um, edible glitter spray now. And it gives you a nice little sheen um, on your cake so you just add you just give it a few pumps to the top of it and around your cake and you have a nice edible sheen to the cake so you actually have some edible glitter they say it's edible okay all right so for the next one we got one down we're gonna move on to the next one All right, so for this one, um, a lot of people always have problems with this design um, because this comb is so tricky because you have to be really, really patient with it, okay? Uh, for the stripes on there, you're gonna always do one layer of stripes first and let that freeze and then come back and add the next layer of icing in to be able to uh, give that stripe effect, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. So our first layer of, our first layer is gonna be white. And I'm gonna ice it. Just like you normally would. All right, so now that I got that icing on there, I'm gonna go through with my comb now and you the same way. You're gonna apply some pressure to it. You don't wanna dig in there, but you wanna make sure that you get in there so that you can push the design through, okay? To create those ridges, all right? Got that. I learned with this design that you have to really be patient, which uh, I was not with it the last time I finally got it because I was not very patient with this design because uh, I just thought it just took too long to get to achieve the look and too much cleaning up to try to get the stripes through. So I've grown a liking for the comb now. And it's actually pretty easy, so I'm going to show you guys tonight. So don't worry about the parts where you actually see the actual cake in, because remember, that's another color. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the freezer. I 
and you let that freeze for about five minutes. All right, anybody have any questions thus far? Because we're gonna go into the next phase where we're gonna use our ruffle tip now, which is tip number 402. All right, any questions so far? Everybody good so far? Yeah, I know I'm a clean as you go, person. Everybody good so far? No questions? We good to go? All right. All right. So I'm letting the um, cake freeze for a second. So for you guys who are just joining uh, in, we have done the roll cake, and now we're getting ready to do our ruffle uh, flour uh, for the top of our next cake. So I'm going to be using tip 402. There's always a difference in the numbers. There's a 402. Um, a small one, and then there's your 403, which is the larger one, your large pedal tip, your ruffle tip. And uh, if you uh, remember, uh, these tips became very, very popular by White Flower Cake Shop. They are a cake shop in Oklahoma that does beautiful flower work, uh, stencil work, piping. Uh, all their buttercream is flawless. There, I have never seen a cake that they've done that I did not love. Uh, their design team is absolutely amazing. Now they actually offer those classes online. Uh, if you're into flowers and things like that. I have always used this tip for a, a specific different purpose, which is the ruffles. Uh, and I've also used it for flowers. So I'm going to show you guys tonight uh, how to create the uh, flower effect from this tip on the top of your cake, okay? Which is really, really simple. Again, you have to be patient with this one um, because it does take a little work and a little piping, but it's really, really quick, okay? So, while, let me see if the other one is froze yet so we can get that one started. Now you'll need your bench scraper for the next part of this one. And what I've known, I found it to be easier, is if you use your torch, okay? Extremely, extremely easy um, to achieve a hot spatula, and it will melt down the buttercream a lot easier. All right. So I popped this in the freezer and gotten, a look, gotten it uh, chilled. Now what I'm gonna do is go in between these lines now and I'm gonna fill it in with my red. So I'm gonna fill in this, follow the line. And I just thought this was like a science project or something when I first seen this done because I didn't understand it. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is start taking off the excess icing. Remember your cake has to be frozen for this. So this looks extremely messy, which I did not understand at first. 
And it took me a minute to get past it because I'm real anal when it comes to making things look perfect. And she, she uh, Esther explained that you have to really take your time when you do this design because you have to scrape the buttercream off for the stripes in um, pretty much in phases to get it all off to clean it up. So you continue to go around and you have to clean off your spatula. That's what I've actually seen helps a lot is cleaning off your spatula because that cleans off the additional buttercream off of there instead of spreading the colors together. Okay. So now, this is where I usually heat up my uh, bench scraper. I gave y'all all my, uh, all my flame, I guess. That's all right. I always keep two. So I'm gonna heat up my spatula because heat melts down the sugar and it helps to clean this up all right so what i did find out is i i noticed that you never get this extremely perfect because if you do if you keep scraping it you're going to scrape away the color and you'll start to bleed the colors together so you get it close to perfect as you can and you find a good side on the camera to take the picture of and that's like that's the, that sounds bad but yeah, that's what it is. I've noticed that everybody ain't perfect. Their lines are not always all the way perfect. So, I start from there. All right. So, because I'm a little extra, I'm going to show you guys the trick. Now, I'm warming up my squeeze bottle which has gotten extremely hot in 30 seconds. But um, I'm gonna let it cool off soon because I've made some ganache. And you know that if you have not listened to me before, that ganache is just one part chocolate and one part of um, heavy cream, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my petals while that bottle cools off and don't burn the hell out of my hand. So same thing, I'm gonna to try to strike my bag a little bit out, add in some red and then add in some white to try to give the petals some variation in color. Uh, the good thing about this one is, the, it, this does not take a lot of icing to do this design because the petals are so small. All right. So you're gonna start from the middle Super easy, okay? All right. You're just making your little center in the middle. Same thing. You're going to keep your turntable going. Continue to come outwards. Can't mess this up, y'all. And you want to keep them short. You don't want them to be really, really tall or long uh, because then they'll overlap the next one. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure as I'm going around. My turntable is doing all of the work.
So what you'll have in the top right now are your petals in the top, okay? So let me see if this has cooled down soon. Yeah, it has. All right. So I'm gonna take my squeeze bottle and I'm gonna go around here, even though it's still kind of hot and burning my hand. <coughs> All right, so I'm gonna add some drips to the side of here, okay? And I'm just gonna go around my cake with my squeeze bottle because you can control your drips with a squeeze bottle. is continue on with our petals and bring them all the way out to the edge and this just gives it a different look okay you can do so many different things with this but this is just something to add different to your holiday menu your valentine's menu um whatever you have going on whatever holiday you have going on And when you see that you may have gotten uh, like any spots in there, you can just go back in and add a petal. You don't have to, it won't mess up your uh, design or anything. And I always just go around, you bring, again, bring it all the way to the end. All right. So we have, a, this is going to be our Valentine's design. So I'm going to throw you. Oh, Valentine's details in there. <coughs> Since we are doing a Valentine's theme, I'm going to use a couple Valentine's sprinkles and get a pan. Hold it over. Take some of my sprinkles. Take them around there. All the excess stuff. So you can use them again. Now, again, I'll just go back and add a border around the bottom. Okay. Hit it with my, <coughs> excuse me, Wilton spray, my glitter spray. And because I like things to look all shiny and sparkle. 
And there you have it. Okay. Simple, simple, simple. And you can get a uh, good. I would, I could, I would say you could charge. I, I said it on the post. You could really get away with charging about fifty dollars for this. Uh, depending on your area, I always say that depending on your area. Uh, but yeah, you could get away with uh, charging only fifty dollars. It's something very unique um, and different, and everybody's not doing it. Okay. All right. Anybody got any questions? This was fun. Um, as you can see, we we got started five minutes after, so we really did this um, in about 45 minutes, okay? So we did two cakes in re literally 45 minutes, um, and that's just with the instructional part. So imagine if you were just doing it without actually talking and showing anything, you could really knock about maybe four or five of these out and knock them out in confidence because it's truly a simple design, okay? Anybody have any questions? I'll give you guys a minute to ask any questions that you have. This was actually really fun. I like these cakes. And our rose, our rose one. Okay. All right. In any questions? All right. If not, as always, we can always there will always be a post where you can ask any questions that you may have, um, and I'll get right back in there with them. Okay. So uh, again, you guys, this has been your Valentine's edition of the rose cake class and also the uh, buttercream uh, petal effect. Uh, and as you got in this class, you actually got a bonus because we did a drip cake as well for Valentine's Day. So always, guys, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys for taking the class. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them here or you can email me at info at cakeking.com. You guys have a great one.